Hello guys, my name is Madhur and welcome to my channel. This is the 54th tutorial in the series of tutorials on Unix Shell Scripting. In this tutorial, we're going to check out a few meta characters and we are not going to make a new shell script. Instead, whatever we're going to learn, we're going to learn through the terminal. So I'll bring up my terminal and the first thing that we're going to learn to do is to execute more than one commands on one line. What I mean by that is if you type in a few commands, let's say ls and cal and echo with a message within double quotes and press the enter key then you would see error messages and that's because it's not allowed to execute more than one commands on one line in this way instead you would have to use a meta character in between the commands in order to instruct the shell that you want these commands to be executed in sequence right so I'll type in ls and then I'll type in a semicolon and then I'll type in cal which is uh, going to be my second command I'll type in another semicolon and then well, let me use banner to display a message instead. So I just display hello. And when I press the enter key now, you see that I first get the names of all the files and folders in my home folder. And that's because ls was the first command in the list. And then cal got executed. That's why I see my current month's calendar. And then banner got executed. So I see the message hello uh, printed with the pound symbols. So that's what you have to do if you want to execute more than one command simultaneously. If you were to do this in a shell script, then obviously it would be easy because on line one, you could type in ls, on line two, you could type in cal, on line three, you could type in echo or banner or whatever, and then execute the shell script in the terminal. And you would just have to type in the name of the shell script just once, right? So that would have obviously been more convenient, but I wanted you guys to know this uh, semicolon meta character and its significance. That's why I discussed it with you. So the next thing that we're going to learn to do is uh, something that you would normally achieve using the if else construct in a shell script, right? So in one of the tutorials in this uh, course, I guess it was the one on rep, I created a text file in which I stored the lyrics of the song money and it was called text underscore file. So let me just cut out the contents of this file to you on screen so that we can be sure. And there you go. You see the lyrics of the song. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use grep to search for a pattern in this text file and if that pattern is found I'm going to redirect that pattern to another text file and if that thing is done successfully then I'm going to use echo to display a message but you see that if you would achieve this task in a shell script then you would have to use the if else construct but we're going to learn to do this without using if else right so I'll type in grep first and then I'll make grep case insensitive by giving it the option hyphen i and then I'll type in the name of the pattern that we wish to search which is going to be money and then the name of the file in which we want the pattern to be searched which is going to be text underscore file and if statements are found then we are going to redirect them to another file called pattern and if this entire thing is done then we are going to use echo to display a message Right, so the message that we're going to display is the task was completed. Okay, I'll put a full stop in the end and when I press the enter key, you see that echo got executed and I get the message the task was completed. And if you would use cat to see the contents of the file pattern, then you would see that it has six lines and each of the six lines starts with the word money. So there were 52 lines in total in the file text underscore file and uh, out of those lines, there were six statements that had the keyword money in them and those six statements were first redirected to the file pattern and since the entire operation was performed properly successfully the echo command got executed and if you wanted to execute the echo command irrespective of the exit status of the command that you have before the double ampersand operator here then instead of the double ampersand operator the operator that you would have to use would be the double pipe symbol right so this is the or operator and uh, what this does is it leads to the execution of the second command even if the first command fails to execute successfully right so there you go that's it for now i'll see you guys in the next tutorial in which we'll discuss something interesting again uh, meanwhile thank you so much for watching this video and please subscribe to my channel